Hey guys, it's Paul. Welcome to Where Nerdy is Cool and meet my little friend, the world's largest 3D printer. It's out here cranking a print away. And today we had a lot of festivities. We revealed the big world's largest 3D printer and two of the largest 3D prints. All kinds of stuff to show you. Are you ready? That's really close. Here we go. Go. It's unveiled three years ago. Congratulations. So the, <clears throat> the print volume is 60 feet long by 22 feet wide by 10 feet tall. Um, the extruder is currently set up to feed about 120 pounds of material per hour, but the machine is capable of feeding up to 500 pounds per hour with a bigger extruder. Um, right now it's set up with a 0.4 inch or 10 millimeter nozzle, and the bead size that it prints out is half an inch or 12 and a half millimeters by 0.2 inches thick, so 5 millimeters thick. Wow. Okay, and the materials that we're, we're, you're using right now? Right now we've been using PLA, Woodfield PLA, which is the material we've developed here, and carbon ABS, because that's been commonly used in the large scale printing, but we could print almost any thermoplastic on the machine. Well, I come from a boat building background, and um, boats seem like an obvious choice for large scale printing. A lot of boats are already plastic. I mean, cars typically aren't plastic. Airplanes are a bit too high-tech and highly loaded, but boats make a lot of sense. They're large, they're complex shape, but they're not hugely highly loaded unless they're very fast boats. So they're already made of wood or composites. Um, so it seemed, to make, it seemed an obvious choice to me as an engineer who's designed a lot of boats that boats should be printable. So let's talk about the bolt print. So how long did that take and anything we Anything we learned from printing that we might do differently? Or? Sure, we took the, the boat, was an existing design from a client of ours called Navitech who designs high-tech boats. So they had a design, we had to tweak it a little bit to make it printable. Um, we printed it using a, a 45 degree printing technique that um, we've developed here on large scale printers. Um, the print took 70 hours to print used about 5,000 pounds of carbon ABS. And we learned that it went pretty well. There's some things we do a bit differently. Um, the controlling layer time is quite important. So the slicer can't actually control that very well. But layer time is very critical for large scale printing to get a good bead adhesion. You want it not too hot and not too cold. So you want to control the layer time within a certain tolerance. So having that automatically um, calculated by the slicer would be great. Right now it's not, it's kind of done manually, you sort of tweak it as you go through the print, which isn't ideal. So on a printer of this size, we're not worried about part cooling fans, we're worried about trying to maintain the heat. Yeah, the bead holds, because the bead's so big, it holds the heat, and you want it to for a certain amount of time, because you're also printing large items, so it takes a while to get all the way back around to where you started again. Um, in the future, we might put some cooling on there, so we can print faster and faster. Right now we typically work with a, between a one and a half minute and a four minute layer time with carbon ABS. It's different for different materials. So we've got the boat, we've got a, and you also do shelter. Talk about that a little bit. We do a lot of work with the army, um, in a particular branch down in Massachusetts that deals with shelters. So I can't talk too much about that work, but they asked us to print a demonstration shelter. This was um, the sort of shelter that goes, it's a little command post that goes on the back of an army truck. Um, that was a, about a 2,000 pound print, it took about 40 hours to print. Well, they've, interestingly, large 3D printing has different opportunities and different weaknesses compared to small 3D printing, so bridging is not an option. The bead's so big, so heavy, and holds so much heat, it just sags. On small printing, you can bridge five inches if you really want to, if your cooling's dead on. Small printing, you can't really, on the, sorry, on the small scale printing, you can bridge a long way. On a large scale printing, 
you can't really bridge more than an inch or so because it just sat, the bead's got so much weight to it and so much thermal mass that it, it doesn't cool down quick enough. So infill isn't really an option. So a lot of these things we're doing now, I mean, infill has been used a bit, but um, a lot of what we're doing now is sort of perimeters. So the boat, we're just printing the shell and a couple of internal ribs, uh, which are hard to model with the size of technology we have now, and um, that complicates things. So we also, you know, the 45 degree overhang is pretty strict. You can really push that quite a lot further on the small printers, again, because of the cooling. But on the large printing, that's tough because the bead has so much mass. Um, we'll, we haven't had the printer very long, we're able to push the envelope a little bit, but um, yeah, there's a lot, a lot we can do. We're going to be doing a lot of work with our federal sponsors and local boat builders. Uh, but I, I welcome dialogue with a lot of the, the folks on YouTube who I've watched a lot of their channels. Um, there's some very smart people out there and I'd love to collaborate with some of them, but, you know, maybe get them up here and talk to us and see how we can work together. Awesome. And if they want to reach you, the best <coughs> way? You can put my contact details in the in the link below, as they say. Where is it? Down here? <laughs> <laughs>